This one will be type A blood. This person will have type B blood. This person will have type AB blood. And then this person will have type O blood. When we're talking about blood types, we're actually talking about the surface antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. Now surface antigens are like name tags on the surface of a red blood cell. So I'm going to draw some red blood cells here. And remember red blood cells are a biconcave shaped cell. This little line right here represents the fact that there's a concavity here in the cell. Okay. But these are four different red blood cells and each different red blood cell is going to have a different surface antigen. This red blood cell right here with the type A blood will have surface antigens. I'll draw them like this where they look like A's. Okay. Now this person right here with the type B blood they will have surface antigens that look like this. I'll make them rounded like B's are rounded. You can see that here. So this person would have type B blood because they have the B surface antigens. It's type A blood, A surface antigens. This person right here with type AB blood will have both A surface antigens. So I'll draw them like this. And we'll also have B surface antigens. So I'll draw them like this. And again, this is type AB blood. Okay. Now this person who has type O blood, they're going to have no surface antigens. So remember type O has no surface antigens. Okay. Now these are what the blood cells would look like with the different blood types. Now remember I'm drawing the blood of four individual people right here with different blood types, what we have to consider is the fact that we also have antibodies floating in each individual's plasma. The plasma is the fluid portion of the blood. The cells are the solid portion. So you've got red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets is the solid portion. Again, the fluid portion would be the plasma. At this point, I've drawn the red blood cells in each individual person's blood sample, but I haven't drawn any of the antibodies in the plasma yet. A person with the type A blood type is going to have anti-B antibodies. antibodies and those anti-B antibodies, I'll draw them looking like this where they have rounded binding sites so they can bind to the surface antigens on the type B cells. Now if we were to take some type B cells and put them in this person's blood right here, these anti-B antibodies would bind to the surface antigens, cause clumping of the cells or agglutination, and that would promote the destruction of those cells. Okay? That means we cannot transfuse type B blood cells into this person with type A blood. Now, a person with type B blood would have anti-A antibodies. Okay? And the anti-A antibodies, I'll draw them looking like this, where they have pointy binding sites. So they can bind to the pointy surface antigens of the type A cells. Now if we were to transfuse these blood cells into this person's blood, these anti-A antibodies would bind to those surface antigens, cause these cells to clump together and promote their destruction. All right, so we're not going to be able to transfuse these blood cells into this person's blood. Now in a person with type AB blood, 
they have both types of surface antigens. So they're not going to have any of the anti-A or anti-B antibodies in their plasma. Okay. No anti-A or anti-B antibodies in their plasma. If they did, those antibodies would bind to these surface antigens, cause clumping, promote the destruction of these cells, and this person wouldn't be able to live. Okay. So this person has no antibodies for anti-A or anti-B. Okay. Now, because this person has no antibodies to react to any of the surface antigens on any of these cells, this person right here would be considered the universal recipient. Okay. We can add type B blood cells to this person's blood, no antibodies to destroy those cells, and we could also add type A blood cells to this person's blood, again, no antibodies to destroy those cells. So this person with the type AB blood is the universal recipient. Now this person who has type O blood has no surface antigens, but they're going to have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. So I'll draw the anti-A antibodies looking like this with the pointed binding sites which would bind to the pointy surface antigens. Okay. And then this person having both anti-A and anti-B antibodies should have antibodies looking like this with the curved or rounded binding sites that would bind to the type B surface antigens. Okay. Now, since this person has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies, we're not going to be able to donate any of these cells to this person. However, this person with no surface antigens on their cells, we could transfuse these cells to any one of these blood types here. Because again, no surface antigens means antibodies cannot bind to this cell to promote its destruction. Okay. So a person with type O blood is known as a universal donor. Now some of you might be asking, what about the Rh factor? Right. Now the Rh factor is another surface antigen, and we could represent the Rh factor as a little squiggle like this. Okay. Now if you have the Rh surface antigen, then you're Rh positive. Okay. And if you don't, then you're Rh negative. Okay. And that's how the Rh factor works. Now normally people don't have any anti-Rh antibodies in their plasma, even if they're Rh negative. Okay. The only way they would get Rh antibodies or anti-RH antibodies would be if they were exposed to blood that had the RH factor or someone that had RH positive blood. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.